Well, I've come here to uh, to run in Poland on a journey I should have made a long time ago. I've come to see the prison camp where my Uncle Davy, Private David James Slater of Scalloway, was interned for five years from June 1940 until early 1945. And these prisoners were transported from Saint Valery in near Caen in France. They were marched for a week with no food to barges on a river taken into Germany and then put in cattle trucks and carried right across Germany into what is now Poland in East Prussia. And this was the furthest east of all the prison camps operated by the Third Reich here in Turun or Torn in German. Torn is an old Hansa city and the city itself has survived quite well. And here outside Torn, Torun are 18 gigantic forts which were built in the Franco-Prussian War to defend the, the Reich against enemies from the east in the 1870s. The forts were never used for that purpose um, and they became prison camps in the First War and the Second World, World War. And here we've come to trace Uncle Davy's journey when he got off the train at the prison camp and was marched along what's now a new road under reconstruction to this fort. This is the first fort, which is now a dairy, where Uncle Davy and tens of thousands of others had to give their name, rank and number, and be registered, receive a registration card. Well, this is uh, Torun Wovni Wov Wov Station. And across the tracks there, you can see the fort, Fort 17. To the left, the building with the peaked roof is the Commandant's house. And in Fort 17, this was a, a sort of clearing station. This is where people came. The British prisoners of war were processed here and sorted out and graded and over there in the woods you can actually see the entrance to one of the subterranean chambers in the fort. The station is the same building. It's been modernized inside but it's the same building from 1940 exactly and this is Alexandra who is going to show us around and Piotr, who is often on the telephone. So here we are at the ramp. The yeah, this, this, is a, this is a military ramp for all uh, military transports in World War One, World War Two, and for prisons. Mm -hmm. This is not far uh, from a central station, but not to looking to civilian people. And once they were unloaded, under armed guard, of course, they would have walked this way. And we're going now, like prisons. And uh, we're marching now. We will march as yeah. they did. Yes. OK, let's march. Well, uh, a new road is being built here and a new pavement, but this is the road they would have marched along from the train going to this 19th century fort. And remember, they, have, they had no idea where they were, I don't think. There wouldn't have been signs on the stations in those days. So it was a mystery tour and a rather menacing one, I imagine. Here's the wall of the fort. This is the edge of the fence yeah. for the fort. So there is no doubt that Davy, my uncle Davy, would have walked, marched along here. Here. Yeah. 71 years ago. 
Palace. And we're coming to the main gate yeah. of the fort. Not here, not here. Just along here. This is now used by a company. It is a dairy. Which is the transit. Now we're standing on a gantry high up on the edge of the fort, right next to one of these air shafts, and looking down on the courtyard and the wooden yellow building with the white windows. Uh, this is administration, is that right, Peter? Yes, yeah, this administration building uh, for uh, taking first contact with prisons. Now looking through the wire here, we can see the enormous scale of these late 19th century earthworks. There's a moat, so even if you got out, you wouldn't be able to cross that. You wouldn't be able to get up the other side. Uh, the trees have grown up a lot since the war, but uh, down there you can see the entrance to one of the cell, the chambers used as cells. So we're now going to Fort 11. And how do we know, uh, Alexandra, that my uncle was probably here? Uh, because in the solitary confinement room there are uh, captions engraved by the prisoners and one of them says 51st Highland Division, Scotland, ah. Scotland forever. Now as you can see this has not been turned into a, any sort of tourist attraction. This is basically as it was. What's this? Uh, it's old German wire and uh, do not take, take this. Oh, nature's grown around. Yes. <laughs> the tree has grown up this around is a, and about the wire. Side sign of time. <laughs> Symbol That's of time. the prison. We're getting inside. Your uncle was here on this fort four years, uh, years long as, as prison. Although he was working on farms, he would be taken mm -hmm. out every day, would he? This was, yes, a head fort and uh, soldiers going every day to farms, to working and coming back. Some of them did live on the farms, I believe, with a few of them. Um, maybe in summertime. Uh. In summertime. Their conditions would be better. Yeah. yeah. But you could not survive here without Red Cross parcels. Uh. Yes, uh, the first year was, uh, was uh, difficult for prisons, mm. uh, no more to eat uh, and uh, 41 coming first pockets, uh, Red Cross pockets. Not till 41? Yes. And in this year uh, Polish citizens help uh, for uh, yeah. prisons, bringing Bread, so the, the local uh, people bread help the prisoners. Help, yes. yeah. Okay, let's go and see it. It's the brick factory side of here. Look at that. That's the sign of the factory that made the bricks in the 18th century. Wow.
Well, I can't believe we got here, but this is it. This is Fort 11, where Uncle Davy was, Baba. And this is the main entrance. And now we're going to go and see the cells where the prisoners were kept. Inside now. Was there electric light, do you think? There yes. was, there was. The switches. Okay. Yes. We are inside the fort. And uh, this was place for four years for British prisoners of war. And not only it was uh, top French generals, mm. and, uh, and this man from Norway, and uh, Polish prisons too. May I? Here's the stove this is from pipe. kitchen, from kitchen. Yeah, the kitchen pipe, isn't it? And we're going now to the kitchen. The kitchen, right. Prisoners' room. Yes. For How many? 30, 30, 30 men in here. Yeah. Well, we're in the cookhouse area. If we look through here we can see the ruins of the, the big boilers that we used to cook up soup for a thousand men. This is the serving hatch. And, uh, now this seems to be the list of the rooms and how many were in them on certain days. So we have up to 37 people in some of the rooms, because there were different sizes, perhaps, and only ten in others. It's maybe ten, ten generals, French ten generals, generals yes. was here. And this it's like ten French generals, generals. Isn't it? This is the bathroom yes. for the prisoners. It says on the wall, silence. <laughs> Somebody with a sense of humour. We can't see much in here. There's some rather interesting graffiti by the, by the free French, or the imprisoned French. Very imaginative, even in prison. Portraits, silence. This is Mickey Goyle. Mickey Goyle. Now for the prosim. There's somebody playing a trumpet. 
trumpets, a man playing a trumpet. There was, there were concerts in here. There was. Yes, he was. Uh, a, he was a band. A pantomime. There was a band. Yes, the accordionist. It's the boys in the, the accordions, and some uh, more fantasy ladies who joined them in their imagination, I suppose. So good artists here. Now this is. I don't know. From Tartu, he was a uh, Tartu. Uh huh. Algy. And he has uh, two bath stewards. <laughs> the two bath stewards. <laughs> the two bath stewards. We're now walking down a sloping tunnel, far underground to the bunker, as it's called. This is the punishment cell for prisoners who tried to escape. Of course, there's no electricity in this building now. There would have been back in 1945. You can see the electric brackets there. Down into the cells. Oops. There's a little light on the wall. Here's the punishment. It says here, Scotland forever. Uh, Sergeant James, Corporal James McDonald. Corporal James McDonald. Yes, you've got here. Seven I will. Days, 14 days left. 14 days leave. <laughs> <laughs> With effect from 27th June 1944. Expires 1 pm, 11th of July 1944. Private James McDonald. Everybody wrote their names in here. There's somebody playing a banjo. Look. Scotland forever. <laughs> there are the, the windows. Punish myself. Well, that's enough of Fort 11. We've been looking at all the inscriptions on the walls of the punishment cell. There are hundreds of them. And one of the projects is to get them all transcribed and recorded permanently. You have to admire the, the builders of this extraordinary place. Um, and be astonished at the vast sums of money which were wasted. The Russian prisoners, when liberated by the Red Army, were put straight into Russian prison camps, Soviet prison camps, because having surrendered they were regarded as enemies. Unbelievable for us to understand that. But uh, when the Russians approached, a few hours before the first Russians got here to Torn, Torun, the German guards marched the prisoners out of the camps and started marching them west, away from here, towards the Reich, or what was left of it. And this was in January. The ill treatment when they'd been taken in June was hard to bear, but they were then, in June 1940, they were young, fit men and well-fed, although defeated in battle. Um, but now they were half starved after being in prison for five years and it was the coldest winter of the century and they had to march without proper clothing or footwear and thousands of them died on the way. It became known as the death march. There were many death marches from many stalags, prison camps. But this was one of the worst because it was the furthest east and he survived that to become my uncle. The Russians coming here and uh, making again in Stalag 20A new Stalag Gulag. This name was Gulag, and uh, two years long was this Gulag for uh, Polish citizens uh, and for German soldiers taking prisons. Uh, and many citizens of Toruń uh, died here. The 
the place where the guard would have stood at the entrance to the camp. A German soldier has scratched his initials using his rifle, his date of birth, and his name and his unit. Many of them have done so. So the, the guards were writing their records on the outside of the camp, while the prisoners were writing theirs on the walls inside. Uh, every stone here on this fort uh, had his story. And these are the ones who didn't survive. 11,000 mass graves in this field, which is a war cemetery. Not individual graves, just piles and piles of them. Russians mostly 10,000 and that sometimes there were people there were trucks arriving with corpses twice a day, two truckloads a day mostly died from typhus and starvation partly because of the Germans and partly because the Russians, the Soviet Union did not recognize the Geneva Convention or the Red Cross and this is their memorial.